I am Sarah May A. Azur. And I am Adelaide Fuyuhoy, teacher one of Maisalay Elementary School, Goa, Kamarimisur, Goa District. Good morning, virtual classmates. Good morning, especially to our beloved professor, Mom Narisa in Vietrice. Our topic for today is all about motivational aspect of behavior. So first, let us know what is motivation. Motivation is the process that initiates, guides, and maintains goal oriented behaviors. It is what causes you to act, whether it is getting a glass of water to reduce fears or reading a book to gain knowledge. Motivation, Motivation involves, involves the biological, the biological emotional, emotional, social, and cognitive forces that activates behavior. This illustration shows how motivation um, generates in a human behavior. We have attitude, success, success performance, performance, support, idea, and goal. So that is motivation. Next, behavior or behavior is the range of actions and mannerisms made by individuals, organisms, systems, or artificial entities in within some environment. These systems, systems can include other systems or organisms as well as the animated physical environment. So here are the human behavior. Ethics, attitudes, attitudes culture, sociology, psychology, creativity, intelligence, genetics, knowledge, knowledge social values. norm, values, communication, and emotions. So that's about human, so that's about human behavior. So next up is the types of motivation. So we have different types of motivation that are frequently described as by being either extrinsic or intrinsic. So when we first, say intrinsic motivation are those that arise from outside of the individual and often involve reward such as trophies, money, social recognition, or praise. Next is intrinsic motivation are those that arise from within the individual such as doing a complicated crossword puzzle purely for the personal gratification of solving a problem. Here, the illustration of continuum of motivation. So we have here extrinsic and intrinsic motivation. So in here, the illustration uh, from the start is instrumental, works toward a tangible reward, avoids negative consequences, may have a fixed mindset. So in instrumental, is it is similar system in education as the factory model that encouraged rewards and consequences. We are so used to this system that we became comfortable with it and find it difficult to change. So students, especially high school student, students, may ask questions like, what is my grade? Or is this going to be on the test? Some students know how to do school to just get through school. Others just want to follow the rules where others are not motivated because they lost interest, are not successful, are bored with school, or feel no connections to the teacher, school, or learning. So next. So the other one is what we call social. Social is where learners want to be accepted as part of a group. This is approval of their peers and wants to place their teacher, parents, and peers. They are motivated by looking good measure 
how they perform with others, especially their peers. Friends may mean more to them than how they do in school. They are still motivated to learn driven mostly by experiencing factors. So next is the achievement. So here are desires to meet learning goals, demonstrates evidence of learning, develops growth mindset. So achievement means learners demonstrate that they want to learn and have a desire to succeed in school. This is also where they want to work well and be successful more than being one of the one of the in crowd. They choose the evidence that demonstrates mastery of learning and how they met their learning goals. This is where they begin developing a growth mindset of believing in themselves and that they know they can learn. So next is... And the last one is what we call self-actualization. Self-actualization is about learners being invested in their learning. They are involved and immersed in the learning process because of their love of learning. At this point, a learner's eyes are open that it is all about them and how they learn that drives them to want to learn more. It could be learning a new skill, attaining new knowledge, creating something they never thought they could build, or pursuing their purpose. In self-actualization, they have agency and know they can learn anything they want to learn if they put their heart, mind, and soul into it. Okay, so that is the fourth continuum of motivation. So here we have here some examples of extrinsic motivation. Also, intrinsic motivation. So in here, extrinsic motivations are going to work to get paid, studying to get a good grade, working hard to get a raise or recognition from your boss. And lastly, tidying your house to avoid feeling embarrassed when company comes over. So in intrinsic motivation, so, in intrinsic motivation, here are the examples as follows. First, working because you enjoy the job. Second, studying because you find the job, I, I mean subject, interesting. The third, drafting a new project because you love a new challenge. And the last one, tidying your house because a clean home keeps you calm. So, those are the examples of extrinsic and intrinsic motivation. So, in here, we have aspects of motivation. So, we have here, motivation takes place within the individual. It is also possible to treat the students in ways that they encourage them to develop the desire for learning. It is impossible also to present materials to be learned in ways that will make learning easier. And the last one is the potential learner's motivation will automatically be directed toward his or most pressing needs and the moment. Okay, so those are aspects of motivations. So we have also here various abilities for us to develop to enhance our motivational level. First, manage the environment. Second, manage our own thoughts. Next, set goals. Next, maintain a healthy lifestyle. Then, make commitment. Next, monitor our behavior. Then, manage stress. And the last one, manage rewards. So, those are various abilities to develop to enhance our motivational level. So we have here explaining motivational behavior patterns. So we have here instinct theory. Instinct theory suggests that you are born with your own set of behavior patterns and that these patterns are not learned. This suggests 
that individuals behave in ways which will be necessary to their survival. However, much of human behavior is learned, for example, being able to speak words and construct sentences. Therefore, Therefore instinct theory cannot be the sole sentence. Therefore, instinct theory... Instinct theory cannot be the sole explanation for the motivational behavior of a human. So next, we have here illustrations. So this illustration shows an inner force, feeling or power that pulls him to do such thing that we wanted to do it alone in order to achieve the main goal. So that, that is the instinct theory. So we have also the drive reduction theory drive reduction theory according to the drive um, theory theory motivation people are motivated to take certain action in order to reduce the internal tension that is caused by unmet needs. needs for example you might be motivated to drink a glass of water in order to reduce the internal states of thirst. This theory is useful in explaining behaviors that have a strong biological or psychological component such as hunger and thirst. The problem with the drive theory of motivation is that these behaviors are not always motivated purely by drive, or these states of tension or arousal caused by biological or psychological needs. For example, people often eat even when they are not really hungry. So those are for drive reduction training. So here are the examples of house drive reduction theory. First, home studies drive is the second. And the last one is motivation to fulfill needs. So, in-house drive reduction theory, it is developed by Clark Howe in 1943. It is a major theory of motivation in the behaviorist learning theory tradition. Drive is defined as motivation that arises due to a physiological or physiological need. It works as an internal stimulus that motivate individual to save the drive. Next, we have here arousal theory. It suggests that people take certain actions to either decrease or increase the levels of arousal. When arousal levels get too low, for example, a person might watch an exciting movie or go for a job. When arousal level gets too high, on how other hand, a person would probably look for ways to relax, such as meditating or reading a book. According to this theory, we are motivated to maintain an optimal level of arousal, although this level can vary based on the individual or the situation. So we have here the Yerkes Dodson Law inverted U model. The Yerkes Dodson Law is an empirical relationship between pressure and performance originally developed by psychologists Robert R. Yerkes and John Dillingham mm -hmm. in 1908. The law dictates that performance increases with psychological or mental arousal back at a, to, the, to a point. For humanistic theory, we have Maslow's hierarchy suggests that people are motivated to fulfill basic needs before moving on to other, more advanced needs. So for example, people are first motivated to fulfill basic biological needs for food and shelter than to progress through higher needs like safety, love and esteem. Once these needs have been met, the primary motivator becomes the need for self-actualization or the desire to fulfill one's individual potential. Maslow was interested in learning about what makes people and ha happy and the things that they do to achieve that aim 
rather than focusing on problematic behavior. So we have here Abraham Maslow, the, uh, the picture of Abraham Maslow. This is, uh, he was an American uh, psychologist who developed a hierarchy of needs to explain human motivation. His theory suggested that people have a number of basic needs that must be met before people move up the hierarchy to pursue more social, emotional, and self-actualizing needs. So this, uh, so that is Abraham Maslow. So we have here the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So uh, we have here physiological, safety, love or belonging, esteem, and self-actualization. So Maslow hierarchy of needs is an idea in psychology proposed by American Abraham Maslow in his 1943 paper. A theory of human motivation and the journal Psychological Review, Maslow subjected extended the idea to include his observation of human aim curiosity. Okay, so that is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So in here, we have incentive theory. It suggests that people are motivated to do things because of external rewards. For example, you might be motivated to go to work each day for the monetary reward of being paid. Behavioral learning concepts such as association and reinforcement play an important role in the theory of motivation. So that is incentive theory. So we have here illustrations of incentive theory. The incentive theory suggests that people are motivated to do things because of external rewards. For example, you might be motivated to go to work each day for monetary rewards of being paid. Behavioral learning concepts such as association and reinforcement play an important role in this theory of motivation. So those are incentive theory. So next is the expectancy theory. The expectancy theory of motivation suggests that when we are thinking about the future, we formulate different expectations about what we think will happen. When we predict that what we think happens, when we predict there will most likely be a positive outcome. We believe that we are able to make that possible future a reality. This leads people to feel more motivated to pursue those likely outcomes. So those are for expectancy theory. So in here, expectancy theory proposes that an individual will behave or act in a certain way because they are motivated to select a specific behavior over others due to what they expect the result of that selected behavior will be. So in here, uh, effort for expectancy uh, in for instrument is the performance and the valence is the reward. Expectancy theory proposes that motivations consist of three key elements and here are the three. First, valence. Valence the value people place on potential outcome. The second one is the instrumentality. Whether people believe that they have a role to play in the projected outcome. And the last one is the expectancy. They believe that one has the capabilities to produce the outcomes. So those are for expectancy. So we uh let me end this quote. The session is the sparkle that ignites action until a decision is made. Nothing happens. The session is the courageous facing of issues, knowing that if they are not faced, problems will remain forever unanswered. Thank you very much for listening and watching our presentation. Again, good morning to everyone. Good morning. 
and God bless us all. Okay. Thank you.